Hi, this is Andy at the English Watch. Uh, what I want to do is just make a quick uh, update to the video I made the other day regarding fitting a clear case back to my Speedmaster. Now I'm filming this on the iPhone, so it's not the usual quality audio or video, but it should give you a good flavor of, of the little points that I want to just draw attention to. Now, there are a couple of things that uh, came up in the chat and also some comments back from Alex, watch professional, in terms of a few mistakes that I made. Now, I'm always up for learning. Uh, I'm not a watchmaker. I'm certainly not an expert. So this is all a, a learning experience for me. But, you know, I like to fiddle and tinker. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right. The first thing, comments around how to secure the um, case to the movement holder. Now the movement holder is clamped to the movement, but it's not fixed to the case. So it will move within. Now, normally on the original case back, what you have is a ledge here that bears down around the anti-magnetic shield and that that edge there bears down onto the movement holder which holds it in place now what we have on the clear case back is a similar ledge it's a bit thicker actually difficult to show now what that does it bears down onto the movement holder here but what i didn't do was try the gasket now the gasket is visibly smaller than the main case gasket so it's clearly meant to go here now sadly the instructions on the spiral winder website weren't that good so i did miss that fact so what this will do is compress between the case back and the movement holder to make sure it doesn't move at all now i didn't pick up any movement but yeah let's fit it anyway right now the second one uh, was regards the dust blowing across the movement. Now, what Alex said was that you've got to be careful that you don't blow the oil out of some of these pivot jaws. So, wrist slapped. Absolutely. So, I won't do that again. It's obviously good to do this in a low dust environment, which I'm doing it in, and not expose the movement for too much. Now, I can use the blower to blow out the case back and any other parts, but just avoid it around the lubrication points. Now, regarding the greasing of the winding tube, that was a little bit of a, let's call it a red herring. Now, I was expecting there to be an O-ring inside here, similar to a dive watch that was going to lubricate. There is no such O-ring. The O-ring is in the crown, and what I should have done is lubed the end of the steering tube so that when the crown bears down on the steering tube, when it's pushed in, not only does it seal it for waterproofness, but it's also a friction surface that we can lubricate. Now, off camera, I've loosened this screw again, pulled the crown out, cleaned the grease out, and just put some grease around the end of the crown, pushed it back on and give it a bit of a spin. Uh, and that seems to be working fine. Now, the final point. Now, the final point is one of pure aesthetics. Some say this watch isn't as nicely finished as the 1863, and they're probably right, which is why the 1863 has a unique number. This is an 1861. And there's some parts like the um, clutch for the seconds wheel. There's like a plastic part, which is the Delrin uh, brake, I think it's called, uh, which I'm struggling to see now, actually. So it just goes to show it's this part here that um, with my tired old eyes, it doesn't make a damn difference. And there's actually some nice edging around the bridge here and on this one. There are some machine marks, but that just adds to the charm. Unless you're getting in there with the loop. Christ, I can't see it. It's got some nice gold detailing. The rhodium plating is nice and shiny and it sort of contrasts nicely with the, the brass wheels. Now, I did take the back off the 861 watch that I sold a few weeks ago. So what I'm going to do is just sort of montage in some images of the 861 versus the 1861. 
Now, I do like the X6 on because it's more um, brass. Yeah, it looks a bit more vintage. Um, but yeah, they're, they're effectively the same movement, same number of jewels, same parts. Just one's rhodium plated, one isn't. So that's just a quick catch up, just to let you know that yes, hand held up, I do make mistakes because I am an idiot. Uh, I'm not an expert, and I do appreciate all your comments. So this is Andy. I've been English Watch. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.